Hey guys, now we're all done camping. We're gonna make us a nice lunch here. We got this two and a half pound chuck roast. We're gonna dry brine it, then we're gonna smoke it on the trigger. Okay hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Todd and this is Greenhorn Barbecue Beer. The Sassy Kitchen Queen is off camera. She's the director. <laughs> huh? Okay, like I mentioned, uh, we're going to be doing up this uh, beef chuck roast USDA uh, choice, which is fine. So we're going to try something that I've never actually tried before, and that's going to be a dry brine. We're going to take some kosher salt, cover it up, put it in the fridge for about six hours or until we can't stand it any longer and need to cook it up. We're gonna be smoking it up on the Traeger, obviously monitoring temperatures with that uh, Smart Thermo Pro TP19. Dry brine, a lot of people do that overnight, but you know, it's only a two and a half pound piece of meat. So five or six hours in the fridge with a nice coating of uh, kosher salt should do it just fine. From what I understand, that salt will soak into that meat, pull out those juices that have dried from the surface, pull them out to the outside, and then when we get ready to season, you're gonna see a beautiful color. So let me show you what we're doing. All right, guys, while uh, Sassy's over there making beautiful, she's doing up our, uh, our kitchen here in uh, holiday charm. All right, guys, so basically, here we go. Already wrapped for us, but uh, hey, we're gonna unwrap it, so. Actually, before I touch this, you know, I'm going to use my left hand only, okay? And a little knife here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay. Not a lot to write home about. You know, it is a choice, you know, but uh, if you see this intramuscular fat here, really, um, you got to say something good about, about these pieces of meat because you do have this intramuscular fat. Now, some people will tie this up. Okay, I'm not going to get that fancy, okay? I'm just going to let it go naturally on the Traeger. Uh, I'm just sitting like that. I'm not going to trim it all. It's only got two and a half pounds. I don't want to have a tiny piece of meat. It's going to shrink a little bit anyway. I'm not sure how much I'm going to lose. But uh, anyway, so let's, uh, let's get some salt on that bad boy. And then I'm going to put it on a nice airing rack, just like that. Okay. And then I'm going to stick it in the fridge. And we go. Okay. That's where it's going to sit for probably about five or six hours. Okay, guys. Thermo Pro TP19. Let's talk about it. Everybody else does it. I might as well, too. Tell you, full disclosure, I'm not being paid for this review but they did send this to me to review. And uh, just before we get started, folks, if you haven't subscribed, if you like what you're seeing, please tap that button right there. It would help us out a lot, let you know that uh, you really like what you see and we'll keep doing this. All right, right off the bat, you know, you guys are gonna hear something loose in that box. Uh, I suspect that's a little screwdriver, little tiny Phillips that they give you in order to take the battery compartment door off because they do include as part of the unbelievably less than $30 price for this thing a free AAA battery pretty nice so let's open it up um, first impression on the box is it's packaged really well um, it's got all the uh, little booklets all the instructions here um, read through to your heart's delight um, it is very thorough I uh, really appreciate the fact that they uh, include so much paperwork on it okay now you guys have seen me use this before in fact I gave it away while we were camping up in Mammoth Mountain during the Thanksgiving week. And a uh, guy by the name of KC, he's got a really great golfing Instagram channel. Go check him out. Be sure to uh, follow him on Instagram. I gave him my other one. So I'm down to one left. So uh, Thermo Pro, if you're listening, you got my P.O. box. 
Okay, here's the little screwdriver that I was talking about. Pretty handy. And, uh, and the battery. Okay, so the battery does come wrapped with a little bit of plastic. So, one thing I want to point out is that it's got a really nice construction. Uh, it is waterproof, um, which uh, is really essential. Folks, if you ever buy a meat thermometer instant read system that is not waterproof, pass it along and uh, go get something else like the TP19 here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in the battery here. And what I really like about this battery compartment is it's got a nice little O-ring seal on that battery compartment door when it comes off, uh, further solidifying the fact that this is waterproof. But we're gonna test it out. All right, guys, like I said, we're gonna test this to see if it's waterproof. So what I got here is a full glass of water and I'm just gonna drop it in. And now, one of the things that I want might wanna point out here to you is that it's buoyant. It's actually floating in this uh, glass of water here. Pretty cool, I'd say. Now I'm gonna turn it around so that the battery compartment's more oriented to the downward side. And I'm just gonna let that soak for a little minute. Okay. Now I'm going to give it a little jiggle. Now, now folks, in reality, unless you're falling off of a boat uh, in that same unfortunate boating accident where you la lost all your guns um, and this falls over, um, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, it's just a little splash. Um, and honestly, I think the reason that it's waterproof uh, it's just for general cleaning and, and to wash this thing after um, you clean it. Just mild soap and water, obviously, after you use it is really all you need. And, uh, you know, I'm just I'm just going a little extra length just to make sure. Now, this is probably an extreme example. Um, it's, it's room temperature water I'm using here. I'd say that's... But anyway, I want to point out again that, that it is buoyant. It is actually floating. So a lot of boaters will put these little foam keychain holders onto their uh, keys and stuff like that. It appears to me like you probably don't need one for one of these. Pretty neat. Okay, now that we got it out, let's give it a little dry, uh, drying up. Um, I want to point out that the water really beads off of it really well. Um, and uh, before we go any further, I just want to check the display. It's still working. It is a uh, motion sensitive and after 90 seconds, even after the probe is deployed, it'll shut off on its own. It's got an accuracy of uh, two, three seconds before it will read the temperature and 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit accuracy. You know, folks, if you've seen my thermometer comparison with the Smart Tro and some other uh, devices, um, I'll leave a little, go check it out. I'm not gonna bore you with this ice test and boiling water test. You know, I found that it's really just inconsequential it doesn't matter you're going to get an accurate reading out of these things really what it comes down to is your personal preference uh, i like red and i like the way this feels in my hand i like the way it's a nice large red display that could be seen in almost any lighting condition i like the fact that it's a adaptive display and when you turn it it flips upside down also i like the fact that it has a button on the back to switch from celsius to fahrenheit in case you find yourself up in canada and if your little tootsies are getting burned, you can lock the temperature reading. Okay, but I can press lock on that button. It'll lock the reading so that you can reach in there. You might have a piece of meat in the back of your smoker. Again, it's only using the end skinny part of that tip um, to take the temperature from. The rest of the shaft is, is not reading anything. And uh, you can reach back poke it in there, hit your lock button, pull it out, and then get your reading. Okay, it's that simple. Uh, it's certainly uh, capable of being waterproof and not allowing water intrusion if you install that door properly. Now, since I've been using one for about six months, uh, Sassy got me one for Christmas last year, and I've been actually using it before I became a uh, brand ambassador. Now, on the back of the box has got quite a few uh, qualities and specifications on this. Now, there's a little bit of stuff I already know about this device, 
and then after we cook it with this chuck roast tonight at the end of the video we're going to go down this checklist on the box together and i'll give you my honest opinion and uh, evaluation of this thermo pro tp19 instant read thermometer all right guys so it's been six hours since we put that chuck roast in the fridge to dry brine it with nothing but kosher salt so let's pull it out all right all right babe so what you got here um this can't stop smoking barbecue smokehouse barbecue rub that you got from where rio doso rio doso new mexico i picked it up in a gift shop up there in rio doso new mexico it's got a lot of great herbs uh some spices and uh you know since we're going to be using this chuck roast for sandwiches we don't really want something too over the top so this should be pretty cool so but look at i want to point out this color um after six hours of the dry brine it just you can see the color change it's just it's huge there's no salt left um and that's what you want to see that salt soaked into the meat it's gone and then it's pulled them juices to the surface okay. All right guys, while she finishes that up, uh, let's go outside and get the Traeger ready. All right guys, I don't need to tell you how to start a Traeger. Make sure you open wide, turn on to smoke, and when the white smoke disappears, set for your temperature and close her down. Now I'm gonna go for about 350. It's gonna get a little bit of smoke, but I really wanna kinda cook it a little bit faster tonight. That dry brine really should make up for any tenderness uh, shortfalls from cooking it a little faster. Uh, that's okay. This is going to be for like sandwich meat, so we're okay with that. All right, so there's a little bit of smoke on there. The drip tray is still a little dirty, but that's okay. I'm just going to put it on there. Again, I'm not tying it up. This is going to be all natural right there. There we go. So like I said, 350 on the Traeger here. I'm using Pit Boss, just blend pellets, nothing special about that. I just like the way Pit Boss pellets are dry. They've been lasting really good in our cupboards. Now, I'm going to be using the Thermo Pro TP19 to check up on its temperature. I'm taking a little bit of a risk. I'm not going to be probing it and monitoring it while it cooks. I'm just going to kind of go on that old adage of, you know, so many pounds and so many minutes and stuff. So I think. And now I'm going to check that internal temp. Now again, we're at 350, and we're just making this for sandwiches. So I'm looking for about a medium to medium well doneness, and that's it. And then we're going to eat. All right, guys, let's check this out. Looks pretty good. You know, I'm not using a mopping sauce this time or anything. You know, I'm just going straight up, cooking through. So let's see here middle there it's coming up now sometimes you might get some false readings with these uh, funny shaped pieces of meat here if I come over here you're gonna see it's almost up to 130 and then I'm right over here 135 but just right next to it 140 Ooh, it's getting hot. Let me try something here. The lock the display. 122. All right. So right there in the middle. Okay, I'm going to show you one of the features here with this uh, Thermal Pro. I'm going to go straight out. Now it's hot in here. I'm not wearing gloves, so I'm just going to go in. It should be set in two to three seconds. Lock it, close it down, there's, there's my temperature right there. Okay, so you saw how I was using this uh, meat thermometer, and it was getting pretty hot in there, and I really like the feature that you can just straighten this out like that, go in there fast, and when you got that temperature in about two to three seconds, hit lock, pull it out, and you're gonna have your temperature there, that way you're not burning your hand and stuff. I really like that feature. All in all, I think this is a really great product, SmartTro TP19, for under $30. I'm going to leave a link down below. Um, 
This is my favorite instant read meat thermometer now. Um, I really recommend it. Guys, go get yourself one and uh, think about giving it as a gift this year. It's a perfect stock, stocking stuffer. So really, by the time I talk to you next, this thing is going to be done. So let's go inside. Okay, guys, uh, really quick before we cut into that uh, beef uh, chuck, I uh, just want to go over the back of the package here with you on the Thermo Pro TP19. Um, again, first impressions is it's a, it's a great instant read thermometer. Um, it's handy to have. It's accurate uh, and uh, definitely very well built. Um, some of the points here, um, I agree it's fast and accurate. Uh, waterproof, okay again, make sure that battery compartment door is on there nice and tight before uh, submerging in water like I did. Um, the auto-rotating display um, definitely works. Um, the motion sensing sleep and wake mode uh, definitely works, no issues there. Um, I really like the lock function. Um, you can get your hand in there and, and uh, take a reading and lock it and then read it once you're uh, where it's cooler. Um, I didn't have to calibrate it. Um, the display is definitely adequate. Um, the tip here, as you can see, is nice and clean. It was very easy to clean. Um, the magnetic back, definitely a handy thing to have. Not all instant read thermometers have a magnetic back, uh, but it's got the uh, magnets in there and you could put it uh, just about anywhere. Um, the kitchen hook right there. Uh, I didn't really need it to use it, but uh, that's a handy thing to have. Um, not sure about how to test for the antimicrobial coating, but uh, I'll just have to take their word for it. Um, I like the paperwork, the meat temperature chart's nice to have, but really, you know, it kind of comes down to preferences there. Um, I set for Fahrenheit, but if you're in Canada or Europe, you might like that you can enter, uh, hold this uh, Celsius Fahrenheit button down for a few seconds and it'll change. Um, the response time, definitely agree, two to three seconds. I've allowed up to three. Um, it's good to count three potatoes and press lock uh, if you're not able to see the display. Otherwise, make sure you wait for two to three seconds to get a more accurate reading. Um, I'm happy with this accuracy um, here, 0 0.9 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, that's decent. A lot of other manufacturers advertise something similar. Um, the probe length is adequate. Um, it's just the skinny tip that takes the reading. So as long as you remember that, you shouldn't have a problem. Uh, the auto shutoff worked as advertised. And uh, for the temperature range, I don't think I'm ever going to be cooking anything 572 degrees Fahrenheit, but uh, that is the range. Uh, so there you go. So all in all, I would say that this uh, Thermo Pro TP19 meat thermometer is a winner. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's one of my favorite ones now. It's why the Sassy Kitchen Queen bought me one last Christmas. And uh, we're going to leave a link down below. Be sure to go check it out and get one for uh, your Christmas barbecue chef crush. It's and good, great stocking stuff. And uh, stuff that stocking. All right, guys, I ended up leaving it on the Traeger at 225 a little while longer. I just want to make sure I got that last bit of uh, heat in there just to get any more tender than I uh, could. I really wasn't going for low and slow smoking tonight. You know, I got to wake up early in the morning and get to work. You guys know how it is. So I started off high, and then I brought it down low. And then when I ran out of time, you know, it just life happens, and it's just time to cut into that meat. So let's, let's check out and see what we have. Yeah. All right, guys, here we go. Definitely has a uh, nice beefy smell uh, right away. You know, I could smell that, um, that beefy smell. Yeah, so right off the bat, I, I, I like what I'm seeing here. Um, let me just cut into this. Now, I'm not that good of on, on cow anatomy to know what part of the cow is any of this here. It's just a chuck. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and cut off a section here and take a peek. Okay, there we go. I would say I cut right through a vein of intramuscular fat right there. And uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take that piece right there. Take a bite of it. Mm. You know that? Oh, it tastes great. 
you know, that seasoning I've never had before. I like it. You know, at first you expect maybe it's going to be salty. That's the first thing I taste on the tip of my tongue. But it kind of calms down, and I think I'm going to then get some spice or something, but it's not there. But it's really pleasant. It's a really mellow spice. I, I like it a lot. I think it's perfect to make some sandwiches. So looks like some of the grain right here in this particular piece is kind of running this way. So you know what I'm going to do? I know Sassy likes the the, uh, the ends. Thin. And I'm going to cut nice and thin. Man, I wish I had a meat slicer, like a deli deli slicer. Hey, any, any of you deli slicer representatives want to send one to us? Hey, our P.O. box is in the description, so. All right, this is nice. This is really nice. That looks really good. Not bad, not bad. Again, we, uh, I went forward, you know, with the intention of making these, like, like sandwiches, and so. Um, that's not bad, that's not bad. All right, let's, let's get, uh, Sassy made me this beautiful little sandwich plate here. Got some, uh, what kind of cheese is this, baby? Um, white cheddar and American. There was only one slice of American, sorry. Oh, okay, that's all right. Babe, I know you like that piece there. That's for you. Okay. I'm just gonna go like that. That's pretty simple, right? I love mayo on sandwiches. I don't care what people say. I like mayo. Okay, let's eat this bad boy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Baby, thank you very much for the bread. I didn't have any patience to grill some bread tonight. But she went and bought the rolls today too. It's a great way to prepare some lunch meat for the week. Do yourself a little chuck roast, smoke it for a while. I recommend the dry brining. It's damn near free. Just use some salt, stick it in the fridge for six or 10 hours. Boom. All right, folks, it's time to kick you out of here because we're gonna go ahead and eat and then retire for the night. So, thank you very much for watching. Please, if you like what you're seeing, be sure to subscribe to the channel, share it on social media if you want, and hit the notifications so you don't miss a thing. And we'll see you on the next one. See you later.